He's the head teaching pro in Baltimore, Maryland's Bear Hill Squash Club, the number two seed in the tournament this week. He has performed according to seeding, only dropping a couple of games during the course of this tournament. Wade joined the tour earlier this season, already earned his spot in the final eight, competing in the Pro Squash Tour World Championship, posted May 345 in just two weeks at the Detroit Athletic Club. Wade is one of the biggest hitters in Pro Squash Tour at six foot two and uh, cat-like reflexes. He's surprisingly quick for a man of his size. Now on the left side of the court, the young Egyptian, Mohammed El Shabini, 20 years of age, moves effortlessly, almost like water on the court. Before turning pro, he was the Egyptian junior national champion in their U19 category. And that's no small accomplishment as Egypt has some of the deepest pool of talent in the global squash scene today. Mohammed upset the number one seed in the tournament last night, Stefano Galifi, the Italian number one, in five close games, edging him 11-8 in game five. Wade Johnstone had a little bit of an easier run. Fabian Kalaitis, who he faced in the semifinals, had a brutal five-game match, just getting past Michelangelo Bertocchi, the member of the Italian national team, in his quarterfinals. 11-9, Fabian prevailed in that game five. By the time the semifinals came around, Fabian's legs were just a little bit tired, and Wade had a fresher route to the semifinal path and, and handled that match in four games. Both players move around the court very well together, and they love the PST more free-flowing style of play. If the players are warming up the ball, we'll be back in just a couple of moments after a word from our sponsors. So we definitely made a commitment to the city and to ourselves for at least 10, 15 years. We have views all the way from downtown out to Lake Erie. Being a young professional. So we definitely made a commitment to the city and to ourselves for at least 10, 15 years. We have views all the way from downtown out to Lake Erie. Being a young professional downtown, this is like the place to be. The energy downtown is amazing. Playhouse Square, the restaurants are our favorite part. It's a city that's really coming back and becoming the city to be in. Obtaining citizenship should be easy, but it's not. Issues such as time out of the country, past DUI convictions, and other minor criminal convictions can cause serious problems. These problems lengthen the process and can increase the complexity. On the other hand, I have had clients who have obtained citizenship through a parent and didn't know it. My name is Joe Rosen. My immigration law offices have helped many people like you successfully get through the citizenship application process. Our focus is immigration, and as a former FBI agent and a lawyer, I know how government agencies operate. My knowledge and experience will make dealing with the Department of Homeland Security easier for you and could be the difference between getting citizenship or not. Call me at 678-461-6046 to make an appointment for a consultation. On the right side of the court in the darker shorts, Mohammed El Shabini, the young Egyptian. On the left side of the court, Wade Johnstone, the veteran. First point of the match goes to Wade.
Deep ball from Muhammad catches Wade off guard. 2 1 to the young Egyptian. Ball skipping out to the center. Shabini appeals for the point. Referee gives it to him. Wade Johnstone challenges the call. The challenge officials agree with the original decision. Point to Shabini. Muhammad takes a 5-3 lead here. The professional squash tour action three years ago, we eliminated the traditional let. If a player feels that his shot to the front wall has been prevented or his movement to a playable ball has preve been prevented, he will appeal to the referee for the decision. But in almost every case, you'll hear point to player A or appeal denied. We do not replay many rallies in the pro squash tour. The traditional standard of making every effort to get the ball or clear a shot is not the standard that we use. We say professional players have an obligation to clear their shot. In essence, you choose a good shot, execute it well, and then clear a path for your opponent to get to the ball. On the rare cases when we do, the referee will choose to protect replay a rally it's to perfect the safety of the players the most obvious example of that is a turn at the back class where an opponent has lost sight of his opponent and it's unsafe to hit the ball you also notice in pro squash tour the players are wearing protective eyewear i think we're the only individual squash tournament on the planet that requires the players to wear eyewear right there an unforced error from muhammad you could hear his frustration as he screamed no wade will take the point Draws it a little bit closer at 4-5 here in the opening game of the 2013 Professional Squash Tour Bettini Fuel World Open. We're broadcasting to you live from the corporate a second on four step for Muhammad, even to the first game up at 5-all. We're broadcasting to you live from the corporate headquarters of Live Technology on the banks of Sterling Lake in Tuxedo Park, New York. Wayne Reavers, the president, the CEO of this company, originally from South Africa, loves the game so much that he had a squash court built in his offices. And it's really helped to build up a nice community of squash fans here. A lot of the office staff here play to get on court before work, at lunch, or even in the evening. It's a great form of exercise. In fact, Forbes magazine just a few short years ago ranked squash as the best sport in the world for getting in shape or staying fit. An amateur player will burn about 1,000 calories during a, an hour-long squash match. The pros, working a little bit harder, they'll burn up to 1,500 calories during the course of a squash match. Shabini's ball popped out to the center. Wade held the shot, appealed for the point, and got it. Six all. The sport of squash is played by an estimated 20 million people in 185 different countries across the globe. The Sporting Goods Manufacturers Association estimates that just over a million now play the game in the United States. Shabini very frustrated himself for another unforced error. These two last faced each other just about a year and a half ago in the finals of the Baltimore 
Open held at the Metal Mill Club, the largest commercial squash club in the United States. Wade took that match in four games, but as he said to me last night, Muhammad is a year and a half older and a year and a half stronger. He certainly looked every bit the professional last night when he faced off against Italian number one, Stefano Galifi. He's the top seed in the tournament. It's a very closely contested match. Muhammad prevailed 11-8 in game five. And Stefano, to his credit, ever the gentleman, said, today I just wasn't the better player. Muhammad beat me. We've got a great crowd here at Tuxedo Park for the finals. Several of the young players from the Newark, New Jersey Squeet Street Squash Program are on hand today, getting on court with the pros before the finals. We saw Fabian Kalaitis, Nathan Tico, and Stefano Galifi on court having hit with the boys and girls. It's really our pleasure to get on court and do these clinics whenever we can. Great for the young players to see what the pros can do. And our pros really enjoy helping out the next generation of players. Wade has been moving Muhammad around in all corners of the court right here. We really had Muhammad on a string for much of that point. I'm sure Wade felt like he won that point a couple of times as he raised his hand looking for a double bounce call. But Muhammad is actually one of the great gentlemen on the court. He'll actually call his ball down. He'll call his ball down if he thinks it was. Ball skipping out to the center. Muhammad appeals to the point and gets it. Wade does not like the call. As I indicated earlier, this is one of the rare moments. Turned at the back glass when the players lost sight of his opponent. The referee initially gave the point to Shabini, but both challenge officials think that that was a question of safety and chose to replay the rally. Muhammad didn't mind. Just went on back to playing. Wade still has game ball here at 10-7 in the opening game. Muhammad taking that ball at the tee. Wrong-footed Wade. Saved one game ball. Forgive me, eight, nine, serving 10. Wade took the ball pretty quickly right there. Caught Muhammad by surprise. Muhammad reached for it, but didn't get it. Appealed to the referee for the point, didn't get it. The challenge officials concurred. Point to John Stone. Wade takes game one. 11-9. We'll be back in just a moment. So we definitely made a commitment to the city and to ourselves for at least 10, 15 years. We have views all the way from downtown out to Lake Erie. Being a young professional downtown, this is like the place to be. The energy downtown is amazing. Playhouse Square, the restaurants are our favorite part. It's a city that's really coming back and becoming the city to be in. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting to you live from the corporate headquarters of Live Technology in Tuxedo Park, New York. Tournament action this week is being sponsored in part by Black Knight. The law offices of Josen Rosen, 
helping squash players, tennis players, and golfers looking to come to the United States and with their paperwork. Halsa Matt. Live Technology, our host for this week's tournament. Cool Cap. Bottini Fuel, the title sponsor of the tournament. DCI Drug Consulting. Keel Heating and Air Conditioning. United Check Cashing. And of course, players in the Pro Squash Tour competing for points and prize money throughout the season to earn the right to be among the final eight competing at the Detroit Athletic Club, May 3, 4, 5, for the PST World Championship Tournament. Last year, Egyptian Whale El Hindi prevailed over David Palmer to win that tournament. Mr. Palmer has already secured his spot to return and will be the top seed in the tournament. The referees called the players back to court. Wade Johnstone to serve. Up one game to zero in the match. Love all. Unforced 10 from Wade gives the opening point of game two to Muhammad. If you're new to the game of squash, the squash court is 32 feet front to back, 21 feet left to right. The front wall is 15 feet high, the back wall seven feet tall. You'll notice the players, the game matches are played to the best of five games. Each game is played to 11 points, but you need to win by two. Players score a point on every rally, regardless of who serves. In terms of strategy, the basic element of the game is you're looking to put yourself at the center of court, what we call the T region, where the service, where service boxes intersect with the mid-court line. From that, that point, the players can get to any ball in just a couple steps, and they're both looking to put their opponents in the corners. Squash is a very fast-paced game, but the angles, the mathematics, the strategy, some people have compared it to physical chess. Typical professional will hit a squash ball in excess of 150 miles an hour. Some of the world's biggest hitters will hit it 170 plus. John White for years had the world record for hitting a, the fastest squash shot at 172 miles an hour. 72 miles an hour. Cameron Pilly, we hear at the exhibition booth at the US Open hit a ball 175 miles per hour. Muhammad again frustrated with himself. Muhammad pumping his fist as he put that ball just a little bit too wide for the racket of Wade Johnstone. Muhammad is extended to a 6-2 lead here in game two. He fell just a couple points short as Wade took game one, 11-9.
Both players moving around each other very well in that extended rally. Fans showing their appreciation. 7-2. Referee giving the point to Wade Johnstone after the appeal. Muhammad, Muhammad appealing the point, appealing the judgment of the officials. Challenge officials agree with the main referee. Point to Johnstone, 3-8. Players are giving three unsuccessful challenges at the beginning of each match. If the match goes to game four, they'll receive an additional challenge. If it goes to the final game five, they'll receive a fifth. If a challenge to a referee's call is successful, the player keeps his remaining challenges. If not, he loses one. Wade questioning the pickup. Referee says it was good. 10-3 game ball to Muhammad al Shabini, looking to even up the match at one game apiece. Ball skipping out. Game to Muhammad al Shabini. We'll be back in just a moment. Work, work. <laughs> I'll be right in. So the numbers come in. <laughs> and how many accounts did we lose to Scott Trade? <laughs> how many? Well, uh, just uh, run those numbers a couple more times before you go upstairs. <laughs> no, I, I don't like the phrase mass exodus, Gary. <laughs> Join the millions of investors who've chosen Scott Trade as the company they count on. Oh, come on! Scott Trade, get invested. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back courtside, broadcasting live on ProSquashTV.com from the corporate headquarters of Live Technology in Tuxedo Park, New York. And this is the finals of the 2013 Pro Squash Tour World Bettini Fuel World Open. We have Wade Johnstone, left side of the court, who won game one, 11-9. Mohamed El Shabini on the right side of the court, serving to begin game three. He won game two, 11-3. Mohammed waiting a moment just to let the crowd settle down. Got a boisterous and active crowd here, really enjoying the match play. Want to say a special welcome to the young boys and girls from Street Squash Newark who are on court prior to the match today. For the second clinic of the week, a junior clinic of the week with the Pro Squash Store players. Very gentlemanly gesture by Wade calling his own ball down. I think the officials were on it as well, but it's always a great moment when a player in the spirit of the game, even in an important match like this, calls his own shot down. Wade a little bit frustrated by that ball skipping out. Muhammad raised his racket, appealed to the referee and got the point. In game three, he's taken an early lead, two game, two points to zero. Down. 
Muhammad actually made several unforced errors in game one. Settled in nicely in game two. Bring that up because the third rally of the game here. Another unforced error. Ball a little bit too deep for Wade. Caught him off guard. Wasn't able to send it back. 3-1 three, three, to Muhammad. That ball too good from Wade. Muhammad was there, but he couldn't do anything with it at the moment he got there. 2-3. Wade hurling his body to pick that one up. Sent it off the back glass and it didn't quite make, reach the front wall. Muhammad extends his lead to 4-2 here in game three. Players tripping over each other, but choosing to continue on. Both players have actually played in the right spirit of the game today, moving around each other, playing every ball they can. The result has been a very entertaining first two games for here for the crowd. Yeah, that ball skipping out to the center. Muhammad raising his uh, Wade raising his racket, but not able to swing because of Muhammad in his in his path. Referee rightly giving the point. To Mr. Johnstone, 3-4 Wade serving. Muhammad frustrated, maybe as much as at the shot, the result of the shot as anything. I'm not sure it was debatable with the referee's call. Razzle dazzle from Wade Johnstone between the legs. The crowd voicing their approval of the point. Both players moving so well. <coughs> Muhammad taking a moment to clean his glasses. Wade ready to serve. Four all. That ball is a little good. Muhammad took it from the, t uh, Wade took it from the tee, put it deep. Muhammad bumped him, but referee calling it too good. 5-4 to Wade. I am just a few feet away from the court and I can hear both players panting heavily. They've been working hard through the first 10 rallies of this game. Both very much want badly to win game three and take a 2-1 advantage in this final.
Ray taking a moment to clean his glasses. Six five. Shot from Muhammad, doesn't come back out. Wade appeals for the point. The referee doesn't give it to him. Wade chooses not to challenge. 7-5, Muhammad serving. <laughs> Muhammad willing himself on. Wade expecting a cross court. Got caught wrong footed as Muhammad put the ball deep in the back left corner. Muhammad wondering which side to serve. Referee tells him left side. Muhammad has a three point advantage and is three points away from winning game three. Brilliant effort from Wade Johnstone there. The crowd approves and even Muhammad approves. Clapping his racket, showing he was impressed by the shot as well. Free calls out the score 9-6. Muhammad has really become a much more focused since game one where he had several unforced errors. Game two, he won 11-3. Here he's got a 9-6 advantage in game three. Now his game ball. Looking to win game three here. <laughs> Triple bow sends Wade the wrong way. Game three to Mohamed El Shabini. He leads this finals of the 2013 Pro Squash Tour. Bettini Fuel World Open, two games to one. We'll be back in just a moment. So we definitely made a commitment to the city and to ourselves for at least 10, 15 years. We have views all the way from downtown out to Lake Erie. Being a young professional downtown, this is like the place to be. The energy downtown is amazing. Playhouse Square, the restaurants are our favorite part. It's a city that's really coming back and becoming the city to be in. Obtaining citizenship should be easy, but it's not. Issues such as time out of the country, past DUI convictions, and other minor criminal convictions can cause serious problems. These problems lengthen the process and can increase the complexity. On the other hand, I have had clients who have obtained citizenship through a parent and didn't know it. My name is Joe Rosen. My immigration law offices have helped many people like you successfully get through the citizenship application process. Our focus is immigration, and as a former FBI agent and a lawyer, I know how government agencies operate. My knowledge and experience will make dealing with the Department of Homeland Security easier for you and could be the difference between getting citizenship or not. Call me at 678-461-6046 to make an appointment for a consultation.
Egyptian Mohamed El Shabini has a two games to one lead over Wade Johnstone here in the finals of the 2013 Pro Squash Tour World Open. Tournament action this week on the Pro Squash Tour is being brought to you with the support of Black Knight, the law offices of Joseph Rosen, Halsam Matt. Live Technology, our host for this weekend's tournament, Cool Cap, Bottini Fuel, the title sponsor of the World Open Tournament this year, DCI Drug Consulting, Keel Heating and Air Conditioning, United Check Cashing, and of course players in the Pro Squash Tour compete for points and prize money looking for the right to be one of the final eight to attend the PST World Championship Tournament in Detroit, Michigan, hosting once again this year by the Detroit Athletic Club. Mohamed El Shabini is back on court. Quick recap, Wade Johnstone came out 11-9, winning game one. Mohamed righted himself and took game two 11-3. And as Mohamed wins the first point of game four, he had also won game three 11-6. Wade will be looking forward to winning this game to force a deciding game five. He takes that ball early, puts it away, and levels game four here at one all. Little bit of contact, Muhammad plays the ball. And we're back to equilibrium. Both players moving very well in this game. That ball skips out a little bit. Muhammad raises his racket, appeals to the point, referee for the point, gets it. Muhammad Wade waits just a moment, probably frustrated his shot as much as anything, doesn't challenge the call. Muhammad up 2-1 here in game four. Skipping up off the tin, Muhammad yells no. Two all. Wade Johnstone to serve. That ball clipping the tin. The tin here has been lowered for us to 17 inches. On a squash court, the standard size for tin that amateurs will play on is 19 inches. But the pros, when they can, play on a 17 inch tin. Beautiful volley from Wade. Hits the nick and doesn't come out. 4-3, Four, three. Four, three, Wade. Johnstone leads Muhammad El Shabini in game four. Muhammad takes that out of the air and puts it on. Wade is challenging the pickup on the front of the court. Challenge officials agree that all balls were good until the final one. Point to Shabini. Shabini to serve. Four serving five.
Referee clarifying the number of challenges remaining for the players, letting them know that they each received an additional challenge at the beginning of game four. They both have two remaining. Muhammad serving four five here in game four. Forced error, error there from Mohammed, putting the ball on the bottom of the tin. Point to Wade Johnstone. Six serving four. for the point. Wade, both players looking back, wondering what the answer was. The referee's decision is to give the point to Muhammad. The players, Wade Johnstone is challenging the call. The challenge officials agree with the initial decision, much to Wade's frustration. It'll be Muhammad's point coming in, 5-6. Wade's point to the referee was that the ball was a long way away from Muhammad. The shot was too good. All three officials believing Muhammad could have picked it up. So that cross court was out of the reach of Muhammad. Too good from Wade. 7 5 here in the finals of the 2013 Pro Squash Strobatini Fuel World Open. We're broadcasting to you live from the corporate headquarters of Tuxedo Park, New York's high technology company, Live Technology. Very unique environment here corporate headquarters with the squash coordinate right in it, but they're very passionate about their squash. That ball comes out to the center. Muhammad appealing for the point. The initial call from the referee was point to Johnstone. Both challenge officials disagree with the initial call, believing the ball was too loose in the center. Wade prevented his movement to a playable ball. Point to Sherbini, 6-7. As is often the case, both players will move around each other very well in the early rounds, but as the game progresses, players get a little bit more tired. Maybe the shots are a little bit looser. They'll find each other's bodies more. There'll be a little bit more contact. Squash is very much a game of endurance as much as shot selection and execution. And today is no exception. We're seeing the fellas find each other's bodies a little bit more in the later round action. That said, both players have been really playing in the right spirit of the game. Playing every ball they can. Clearing the shots as they can. Wade wanting the point right there does not get it. Frustrated by that decision. Ball looked to be a little bit beyond his reach, however. 7-7, seven, seven. he doesn't challenge the call. 7-7 seven, seven here in game four. Muhammad wins this, he wins the final, wins the title. Wade looking to win this game to extend it to a deciding fifth game. That ball skipping out. Very similar to a shot we saw earlier. 
The ball skipping out a little bit. Referee calls the point to Johnstone. Challenge officials agree. And I have to say it was right. It really was a loose shot that skipped out from Muhammad. Wade rightly asked for it. As Muhammad was in his way, not only to the path, but his racket was ready. Brilliant cross court a shot from Muhammad doesn't come out. Wade extends his body, but isn't able to catch up to it. Eight nine. Skipping out to the center. Muhammad frustrated, but that ball clearly was skipping out of the center. Wade held his shot. Yeah. That's the right call. Challenge official saw it as well. Ball had skipped out to the center. Wade was ready to hit it. Muhammad was in his, in his way. Point to Johnstone. Wade now holding game ball in game four. Every player in court, when they're talking to the referee, says their opponent is too big, they're too small. I'm sure Wade would say the same thing if he were frustrated by the call. Players taking a rest right here. Wade serving 10-8, looking to reach game five here in the finals. A little bit of contact here in the early part of this rally. Brilliant rally, both players running around each other. 9-10, Swahaba takes the point. Still game ball to Wade Johnstone. There, Wade plays the ball. Still more contact. Wade Johnstone appeals for the point, gets it. Mr. Shabini has used his final challenge so far. He'll get one more in game five. Does not like the call. But we are now tied at game four. Two games apiece. We'll be back in just a moment for game five in the 2013 PST Baltimore Pro Squash Tour World Open coming to you live from the headquarters of Tuxedo Park, New Jersey, uh, Tuxedo Park, New York's live technology company. So we definitely made a commitment to the city and to ourselves for at least 10, 15 years. We have views all the way from downtown out to Lake Erie. Being a young professional downtown, this is like the place to be. The energy downtown is amazing. Playhouse Square, the restaurants are our favorite part. It's a city that's really coming back and becoming the city to be in.
just walking into a meeting. Work, work. <laughs> I'll be right in. So the numbers come in. And how many accounts did we lose to Scott Trade? <laughs> how many? Well, uh, just uh, run those numbers a couple more times before you go upstairs. <laughs> No, I, I don't like the phrase mass exodus, Gary. <laughs> Join the millions of investors who've chosen Scott Trade as the company they count on. Oh, come on! Scott Trade, get invested. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back courtside, broadcasting live on prosquashtv.com from the corporate headquarters of Live Technology in Tuxedo Park, New York, for this afternoon's finals of the PST Patini Fuel World Open. In just a moment, game five, Wade Johnstone of Australia, the big Aussie, won game one, 11-9. Mohamed El Shabini, the young, charismatic and talented Egyptian, took game two, 11-3. Game, game three went to Mohamed, 11-6 as well. And we just watched Wade take game four, 11-8. Both players have just got on court. Mohammed changing shirts, green and yellow. It says Shabini on the back. Wade Johnstone in the blue shirt, representing Bear Hills, his home club where he's the head teaching pro. And we're underway here in game five. Match is tied two games apiece. The winner of this game wins the match and the tournament title. First point of the game to Wade Johnstone. Without a doubt, there was a little bit more contact in game four than we'd seen in some of the earlier games. Indicative of both players ratcheting up the intensity. Maybe a little bit of fatigue setting in too. As Wade went by, he nicked Muhammad's elbow, appealing for the point. Muhammad says he hit my arm. The referee agrees, giving the point to Muhammad El Shabini. A split decision from the referees means the original call is upheld. Referee reminding the players that they each received an additional challenge at the beginning of game five. Muhammad hitting a very tough drop shot. Wade just got his racket on it, but was unable to clear it. Point to Shabini. He leads two games, to two to one here in game five. The match is knotted up at two games all.
Ball from Muhammad not. Not above the tin. Point to Johnstone. Muhammad saying so to himself, two in a row, two in a row, as he hit the 10 two times, unforced errors. Wade serving with a 4-2 lead. Wade picking that ball off of the tee. Just out of the outstretched arms of Mohamed El Shabini. 5 2. Mohamed cleaning his glasses. Wade hitting a nice length. Down the right wall to the back glass. Actually stepping aside to clear a path for Muhammad. But it was too deep and too fast. Muhammad adjusting the laces on his shoes. And he's ready. Wade Johnstone serving. Ball from that ball from Wade kicked out. He appealed to the point after Muhammad's shot. Didn't get it. Isn't challenging. 3-6. Muhammad El Shabini serving in game five. Wade expecting the ball to go to the front left. Muhammad sends him deep in the back right. Point to Shabini. Contact. The official and the challenge officials both agree there was not enough contact to warrant a point being given. Referees are saying that by the time the ball is playable, both players adjusting their glasses, catching their breath. Wade Johnstone serving 7 4 here in game five. shot from Wade and Muhammad's frustration is at himself right now as he put the ball into the bottom of the tin Eight, 
If you're just tuning in right now, we are 8-4, Wade Johnstone serving, leading Mohamed El Shabini in game five of the finals of the Pro Squash Tours 2013 Batini Fuel World Open. A tin right there from Wade results from Mohammed. Inching a little bit closer, 5-8. From the deep back corner, hard to tell if you intended that or not. He apologizes to Wade, but you don't get any points for beauty in this game. 6-8. Muhammad had turned at the back glass was unsighted into w where Wade's position was. Both players looking up to the referee anxiously wondering what the decision would be. The referee says, Muhammad was unsighted. We're going to replay that rally to protect the safety of the players. That ball skips up out to the center. Muhammad's in the way of a shot. M Wade appeals to it. The referee gives it to him. 9-6. Wade Johnstone is two points away from the match and the tournament title. Muhammad sends Wade the wrong way. Wade cannot recover. Point to Muhammad, 7-9. Seven, nine. Seven, nine. That ball skips off the racket of Wade Johnstone out of court. 8 9. Muhammad taking that ball from the tee, putting in the front right. Referee saying point to Shabini. We are knotted up at nine all here in game five. Muhammad El Shabini in the green and yellow serving to Wade Johnstone on the left, wearing the Bear Hills colors on his back, blue shirt. Wade's the head pro at the Bear Hills Squash Club in Baltimore, Maryland. Muhammad, originally from Alexander Egypt trains out of the Boston area now at Harvard University. A little bit of contact right there in the center. The ball skips out. Wade's ready for it. Muhammad protesting the call, but the ball did skip out. Wade was ready, couldn't swing. The referee giving the point to Wade Johnstone. Muhammad not challenging the call. This is a championship point for Wade Johnstone, 10-9 in game five. <laughs> Muhammad passionately winning that point, gesturing to the register, gesturing to the referee. We are at tied at ten all in game five of the Patini Fuel PST World Open. First player to get a two point advantage will win the match the game, the match, and the tournament title. As is so often the case in squash tournaments, as the crowd cheers that on, the tension in the room, you can feel it on, camp, on court and off. Fans are literally on the edge of their seats, quietly paying attention. Muhammad has championship ball on his racket right now.
Mohamed too deep in the left court. Wade sprawls but cannot pick the ball up. Mohamed El Shabini is the 2012-2013 Post Golf Tour World Open Champion. Wade, matches do not get any closer than that. 12-10, game five, tournament title on the line. Both of you moving around each other so well. Game four, a little bit of, a little bit of bumping as Wade Johnstone is catching his breath right here. Very tightly contested match. What was it like on court, Wade? Uh, he's improved a lot in the last two years. And uh, he played well today. He had a few uh, unforced errors in patches, but uh, pulled it together in the end and uh, played well. Wade, you're a great gentleman. I know you, some of your fans in Baltimore, Maryland are tuning in. You're the head pro at the Bear Hills Squash Club there. What's it like for you splitting your time between competing on the professional circuit and as a teaching pro in Baltimore? Oh, it's very difficult, obviously. Um, <coughs> it's tough to manage uh, training and coaching, um, but I enjoy it, which is why I keep playing. We're thrilled to have you here. Not the results you were looking for today, but a brilliant tournament. We'll see you two weeks in Detroit for the PST World Championship. Thanks, Jay. Ladies and gentlemen, Australia's Wade Johnstone. <laughs> Mohammed, congratulations. Thank you, Joe. Wade gave you everything you could handle today. He was moving well in patches, as he said. You were hitting the tin, but you gutted it out. You found a way to win and prevail 12-10 in game five. I mean, he was, he was playing really well in the front and the back, and I was, I was, he was cutting a lot of volleys off of my cross courts and drives, so I, w I was trying to always keep it tight on the backhand. And when I had that chance, I wanted always to go in front of me. I didn't want to go for neck shots or like fancy shots, because he was always on every ball. He's a very experienced player, and I'm so glad to win today. In a match where it's so closely fought like this one, neither player is going to be happy with the referee's decision. In fact, on every decision, you can be assured that at least one player is unhappy. What do you do to mentally keep your focus in this kind of match? I just think about it for like five seconds, then I take it out of my, my system, then I keep playing again and again. That's it. I see a lot of uh, young boys and girls from Newark, New Jersey, the street, street squash program here today watching. We had a clinic with them on court. You grew up in Egypt. You were the Egyptian junior national champion, now based in Boston. Can you tell us a little bit about life in Egypt and the squash experience versus what you're seeing now in the United States and America? I mean, it's, it's just in Egypt, the culture has a lot of squash courts and like the squash is based inside the culture. I grew up looking at Chabana and like Ashur and a lot of players that always play in like this Cairo Stadium, which is the biggest, which is the powerhouse in Cairo, which all the Egyptian national team trains at. And just very different here. It's it's not as intense as Egypt. In Egypt, like the players go inside the courts for three, four hours, keep training, 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 training. Here, maybe it's not as intense. So maybe that's the difference. Do you have a message for your fans at home who might be watching on Pro Squash TV? Of course, I would love to uh, dedicate this match to my father at home and my mother. They're watching right now. Thank you so much for everything they did for me, and that's all I can say. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2013 Batini Fuel PST World Open Champion, Mohamed El Shabini. Congratulations, Mohamed. For people watching at home on ProSquashTV.com, my name is Joe McManus. You've just watched Mohamed El Shabini of Egypt win 12-10 in extra points in Game 5. We've been broadcasting to you live from Tuxedo Park, New York's live technology headquarters for this afternoon's match of the 2013 PST Batini Fuel World Open. This concludes our broadcast for today. See us in two weeks, May 3, 4, and 5, where we broadcast again live from the Detroit Athletic Club in Detroit, Michigan for the PST World Championship Tournament. Thank you and good afternoon.